Yes, I'm here. Can you talk? I cannot hear you. I, I, I hear you. No, I hear you too. Oh, yeah? What's me to No problem. Hello? I, I can hear you, huh? Okay, okay. Uh, so, uh, are you ready? Almost. <laughs> oh, okay. Ready? For presentation, you, you control your, your slide, okay? Yeah, I will, I, will, I will send you my PDF, yeah. You, you control you, yourself your slide. Hello? Yeah? You, uh, when, when you present uh, your slide, your, your PPT, you, you, you control your, 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 your slide. slide, your PPT, okay? Yeah. Uh, wait, I need to... I need to grab something. See if the cam works, yes. Oh, good. It works as well. So I've got two cameras. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, Samadhi. Okay. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And this is my second thing. Hey! How are you? Oh, fine. How about you? I'm good. Where are you exactly? I'm in Where my uh, workshop. Oh, in your office? Yeah, this is. Uh, uh, wait, I'm going to change to the camera. Oh. This is, this is my hangar. Huh? Oh, okay. See? That, that is. Uh, the, uh, what's, what's kind of. Uh, uh, what's kind of. What kind of. Uh, the jet? In your number? It's F-16. Oh, no. Where do you go with that? And over there, we got a helicopter. It's new. Yes, helicopter. And then uh, on the other side, we have uh, civil aircraft, uh, Airbus. This is F-28. Ah. Mm -hmm. So you work uh, for their... Uh, for their uh, composite, of course. Composite, yeah. Oh, yeah. La, la. How about oh. COVID in Holland? Yeah, it's, uh, you have it on control. It's uh, it's less. It's very less. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And you can you, you can go to a cafe like no problem. No, no problem. Everything is open as normal. So we we oh, we live our life as normal. Ah, yeah, yeah. It's, I think it's the same with Batam. It's really small. No, I can, I can, uh, I cannot enter Indonesia yet. Huh? Oh yes, of course, still close. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I cannot yeah. enter it yet. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, still yeah. close, yeah. right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We hope uh, next month or maybe you pass from uh, Singapore if uh, Singapore open their seaport uh, 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 or uh, airport. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a pity. Yeah. Thank you so much for your participation in this program, Of course, of course. Huh? Huh? We hope we yeah. can continue our progress, of course. Yeah, we are gonna do that because it's. Uh, um, I, I'm working hard now to set up the the, the repair shop huh? mm. in Indonesia, so that's important. Yeah. And uh, uh, Wowo tested our online platform. Mm -hmm. And, and about that, huh? that yeah, online yeah. platform, I'm going to make one now for Polybatam. Oh, 
Oh, okay, good. Very good. Yeah. Polybaton will have his own learning management system. Okay. I'm, I'm, my uh, my uh, uh, web developer is building it right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it will be, I think, uh, we, need to, we need to check on the name. So uh, polybaton uh, dot online or uh, anything what you prefer. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can, uh, you can, you can give your students, but also other universities that they look okay. on the Polybatam learning management system, mm -hmm. so that every school in Indonesia is your is using your uh, platform. Ah, so good. Yeah, I will promote it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, currently, I'm working on that right now. Mm, yeah. Okay. okay. I, will, I will promote it for uh, any university, all universities. Yeah, we, we, we need to think about the name that we want to use for that online platform. Okay, I, will say, uh, I, I will discuss with uh, uh, my team from uh, IKEA. Yeah. yeah, but I will do, I will send you an, uh, an, uh, a WhatsApp about that. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Okay, very good. Let me go. Thank you so much. What are you doing, Mr. Okay, please, you prepare with a wall for your uh, general Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good. Thank you so much, Rick. Thank you too. Appreciate I it. Send, I send, uh, I send uh, this uh, our, our uh, this player to, what's the name, Bandung? Is it? Chris. No, 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 no. Is it? No, 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 uh, you're, you're, you're in Bandung? Oh, yeah. Only Hola, one? Hola. Eh? Your colleague, your friend in Bandung. Your friend in Bandung is, what is his name? Chris de Koning. Oh, yeah, Koning, yeah, Koning, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, to Heru, to Dadra, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said uh, that, yeah. Good. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, hey, okay. okay. Thank you so much. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We stay in touch. Yeah, I will participate, of course, yeah, yeah. All right. Please. Wait. Whoa, whoa, how do I, uh, how do I share uh, my PowerPoint? It's better you, it's better you, you play your, your uh, PPT and, uh, and I, I, I'm only introduced in the, in the first, in the start and after that uh, we will Oh, we share screen. Ask you a, a question and we will uh, ask you about uh, your your impression about this uh, this uh, lecture. I think you can you can you can try to 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 move your your your, your PPT also yourself. It's better. I, I want to I want to try it no? to, see, to see if it works. Yeah, it's all good. Good idea. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, Does it's it, okay. Do you see my screen? Yes, it's okay. Good. Good, good. Yeah, it's okay. Good. Okay, good. Then I'm ready. Yeah, good, I'm good. Ready. It's okay. I'm, I'm ready to rock and roll. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we, we, are, we are waiting for maybe... A, yeah. We have a four minutes to start. Yeah. Just like good. Is this your office? Uh, this is this is the clean room, the composite clean room. Very very clean. So this yeah. is uh, uh, what you see here is we have built a facility. Yeah, you you, you can show to the to the audience your your rooms, your clean room. And this is the, this is uh, the hangar. Huh? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, 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 good. So it's only for uh, for training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. Well, Rick. Should... Rick. Yeah. Mm. Uh, the higher uh, education of uh, Indonesia has for the as for the button to to set a, a training for for lecturer and uh, instructor. It's not all right. As you as uh, our partners, okay. For sheet metal, uh, right? 
the value will be used in your, your, your syllabus, your syllabus, and maybe uh, the title is you. Good, and nice. Yeah, yeah. Good. But uh, we, we must have, uh, yeah, we will discuss uh, after this, after this lecture maybe, or uh, in the WhatsApp. Okay. Hello. I'm here. Huh? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, that's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah. So, are they are the students coming here as well, or, or they follow it on YouTube? Yes, yes. Uh, we have about this is list of uh. Attendance. But they all they all join here in the in the oh yes. Yeah, we will we will see you. Uh, they they will see you. Uh, they will see your presentation. I see. It, yeah. So now it's eleven. And uh, Rick, not only my student who who will come to to see you, and some come uh, from a. Uh, from the government, for example, from, from uh, another institution, from a uh, manufacturer, and from uh, other other polytechnic. Oh, good. Yeah? Yeah. It's okay, it's good. Good. Good, very good, actually. And... Belum ada yang masuk. Hello, Rick. I remember me. Okay. Rick, this is our friend, Rick. Our friend, Sophie. I remember yes. me. Yes, of course. This is Rick. Okay, okay. Misalnya, Sudah siap? Boleh kalau mau mulai. Satu menit lagi sih. Masih baru 11 orang. Hmm, kalau itu nggak biasa aja. Halo. Halo, Assalamualaikum. Ya, Pak. Halo. Ya, yes, ya, Pak. Udah ada masuk, Pak. Banyak oke. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, para audiens yang dimuliakan oleh Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, pada sore ini kita akan kembali melanjutkan uh, public lecture seri kita dal uh, dalam tema pakal berbagi. Kemudian, pada sore ini kita akan menampilkan seorang pakar yang sangat terkenal di bidang uh, material komposit. Kita akan me memperkenalkan kepada para audiens. Beliau adalah Mr. Rick van Opdorp dari Akrat, uh, Nederland atau Belanda. Yang kebetulan, Alhamdulillah pada sore ini beliau bersedia untuk menemani kita untuk berbagai berbagi mengenai uh, material komposit. Nah, para hadirin yang, yang saya hormati, Uh, seperti webinar-webinar sebelumnya, ada beberapa peraturan dalam uh, acara ini. Uh, salah satunya ya kita bisa 
bertanya mengenai berbagai pertanyaan, cuma kita batasi jangan sampai membicarakan masalah sara ya. Kemudian kalau yaitu uh, bisa dilihat di di layar beberapa peraturannya. Kemudian kalau ada nanti ada pertanyaan yang ingin diajukan kepada narasumber bisa ya bisa dikirim lewat uh, chat ya. Kemudian uh, webinar ini akan kita uh, jalani atau kita lakukan selama kurang lebih satu jam. Kalau ada pertanyaan yang 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 masih banyak kita akan tambah beberapa menit ya nanti. Kemudian uh, untuk sore ini uh, saya akan memperkenalkan dulu uh, Mr. Rick ya, Mr. Rick Van Ofdorp. Mungkin dalam dalam perkenalannya mungkin akan kami minta beliau sendiri untuk uh, memperkenalkan diri ya. Oke, okay. selamat datang kembali di uh, webinar kami. Kami akan menyerahkan waktu dan tepatnya kepada uh, Mr. Rick Van Opdorp. Uh, Halo Rick, how are you today? I'm good, thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Please Rick, uh, introduce yourself. Okay. Uh, maybe uh, you can uh, first uh, start with introducing yourself, and then after that you you make a presentation maybe for about 40 or 45 or 50 minutes. And then after we we have uh, some question from uh, audience, and we must you must answer uh, that. And after that you, I will ask you about impression about uh, about uh, this uh, lecture. Yeah. Okay, uh, please uh, the time and please is your turn. Good. Thank you very much for the introduction. So um, my name is Rick. Um, I'm the instructor for this lesson today. What we're gonna do is um, I'm gonna give you some demonstration about resonant fusion, some uh, composite techniques, composite manufacturing techniques. I'm gonna show you some inspection techniques and some repair techniques. Where, where am I located? Uh, I'm in the Netherlands. And we are located here in, an, uh, in a maintenance hangar. I'm gonna show you Around here, this is the where I'm located now is the clean room, and where we are located here is a maintenance hangar where we have an F-16 uh, fighter jet. We have some helicopters. We have some commercial aircrafts. Um, so all those um, all those aircrafts are only here for training. So that means. Um, when we conduct composite repair training or sheet metal compare uh, repair training, we go to the aircraft with a hammer and we damage the aircraft parts and we repair it on site so that the students will be ready for the work of tomorrow. Now, that said, is I'm going to uh, share my screen with you to show you the, uh, the composite presentation that I prepared for you. And if I go too fast, uh, just let me know. But we have a limited time and I want to share a lot of information with you. So I, I go fast to the introduction. Um, the reason why we do this training is because composites is growing very rapidly. If you see the numbers, 2020, it goes very, very fast. And uh, if you compare that with uh, today aircraft, we have the Boeing 787, we have the Airbus A350, and uh, over 50% of those aircrafts are composites. Now, if you, if you look at sporting goods, the fact that that little girl can lift that bike, it's, it shows that the composite is very light. Now, just mention 787, A350, 52%, and we have over 50% on the 787. So that grows very fast. Now, we are going to fly the F-35. 35% 30, of that airframe is uh, composites. If you compare that with the F-16, and it's the same aircraft we have here in the hangar, it, 3% of that airframe is composites. So having those, uh, having as, a, as an aircraft engineer, as a, a technician, having knowledge of composites is very important. Uh, wind, tu wind turbine blades, fully made out of composites. Uh, oil and oil pipes from, uh, from gas and, and oil made from, uh, from steel now turning into composites as well. 
Now the automotive industry, the fact that they can lift the frame with two, two persons. The, the, the art industry, the sporting goods and all other applications. Now looking into composites is different than working with uh, metal metallic materials. Safety is very important because composites is, is a combination of materials. And one of those combination is uh, using resin and other chemicals. Uh, and that, that said, it's very important to protect yourself from those chemicals. And uh, MSDS stands for Material Safety Data Sheet. So before you work with any chemicals, uh, you need to be aware of the uh, safety risks of that material. Now, that's why we have personal protection. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna stay too long here. The only thing is, the only important thing is that you always need to be aware of the fact that you're working with chemicals. Now, one of those uh, uh, risks you can have is an epoxy allergy. And that looks like this. I go a little bit fast. Uh, an epoxy allergy is uh, a reaction from your body to the, uh, to the chemicals in the epoxy, in the resin. Uh, so once you have that, you can never work with epoxies again. So please wear your gloves, wear your protection, because it's very important. Now, talking about composites, what are composites? The definition of a composite are a material, two or more uh, that combined are made each other stronger. So if you look at this picture, you see concrete, but concrete with the steel is a composite. If you look here, this is a composite as well. This is a composite as well. So when we talk about composite, we talk about reinforced plastics in our industry. That means a fiber combined with a resin. Now, in this case, you see carbon fiber uh, and a resin. So that's our composite. We go a little bit further on the composite material. Why we use uh, com uh, compared with, uh, with sheet metal is if you look over the stress cycles, uh, so the stress and the cycle, you see carbon is much, much stronger. So the fatigue limit is much uh, better than the metallic. I'm going to pass this. So you have two kinds of, uh, of structures. Monolithic structure, that's only a sandwich. You see that in the right corner top. And you see on the left, uh, you see a sandwich structure. Now, the, the name sandwich already mentioned it. Sandwich, there's something in between. And I will, uh, a little slide further, I will mention about uh, the sandwich structure. But um, mentioning about a sandwich, what you see here is a solid laminate and adding something in between, in this case, it's honeycomb. Uh, you see that the stiffness goes up by seven, by 37, and the weight barely goes up. So you make a product very stiff and very strong and the weight uh, almost don't go up. Now, what kind of uh, fibers do we have? We have glass fiber that's white. You have the carbon fiber, black, and you have aramid fiber, that's yellow. And aramid fiber in an other brand is uh, Kevlar. Now, why we use the different types of fiber? Um, carbon fiber is the, is the most stable fiber. It's also used for primary structures. So like a fuselage, the wing stabilizes elevators. If you look at glass fiber, this is normally used for secondary parts. Uh, also uh, used on the radome for the transmission. Behind uh, the radome, there's a radar and to receive and transmit um, all, the, all the signals, it needs to go through the material. So that's, the glass fiber is the best there. Now then we have the aramid Kevlar. And what you see normally is Kevlar is used for high impact. So think about a soldier, his vest or the helmets, uh, so it's very difficult to use Kevlar in the, in the production process or repair process because it's very difficult to impregnate the material and it's very difficult to cut it and to, uh, to machine it. 
Now we have different fiber technologies. We have unidirectional fiber and a woven fabric. So on the left, uh, you see, um, let me see if I can make a laser pointer. Here you see a unidirectional uh, fiber and that's a fiber only one direction. And if you look at the woven fabric, you see a direction like this and a direction like that. So that's the difference between unidirectional and a woven fabric. And that's, we have a warp direction and a weft direction and the unidirectional only have a warp direction. And a warp is the strongest direction. Now, two layers or more, they're called a laminate. So in, in our case, all the, the, the fibers, the composite parts using on the aircraft or the fuses all laminate. From, uh, we, we just saw a glass fiber, carbon fiber, uh, an aramid fiber. Those are all um, we, uh, fibers, but it, the difference between the fibers is the weave style. So there's a different weave pattern. We can make the difference in a plain weave. And what you see here is it goes under, above, under, above. So one on one. So this is only used for flat surfaces. So when you have a floor panel that's totally flat, they use plain weave. If you have something with a slight uh, uh, radius like this, a bend, um, you need to use a twill weave because you can bend it. Uh, this is two on two. So it goes two under, two above, two under, two above. Then you have the 3D pattern. So like a, like a radome, uh, it's a satin weave. So it goes one under and three above, one under, three above. So that's a different in weave styles. And you have uh, a lot more weave styles, but uh, in the aerospace industry, those are the three most common used uh, weave styles. And we have the unidirectional that only has one um, pattern like just mentioned here. So you don't have the, the, the weft. So if you combine it, or if, you, if you see it in an overview, you see the plain weave, satin weave, and the twill weave. Um, so you see, you see the difference in weave pattern. Flat surfaces, one was slightly curved, and this is 3D curved. Now, what's important to know about uh, a fiber direction, because on a, a part is built up in, an, in a direction of, of fibers. Important to know is what is the um, what is direction of your warp clock, and it's what I just mentioned in the in the weave style is that you have a warp and a weft orientation, and your warp orientation is the strongest orientation of the fiber. Now what you see here is a panel is built up in uh, several directions. You see a direction like this, a direction, and then you see here the line of the fiber. It's important to know because when you open a repair manual, you see um, like this panel. I have a panel like this. It's made, it's carbon fiber. It's made out of five different um, layers of fiber. In this case, carbon fiber. And layer one is directed on 45 degree Layer two is directed on 90 degree. Uh, so it's important for me to know if I do the repair, what is the fiber orientation of each layer? Now it has all to do with the warp orientation. So looking into the roll is the warp orientation. That's your strongest uh, direction of the fiber. This is the warp clock. That means that if I have a, a repair on, um, on 45, my warp orientation need to point this direction. If it's zero, it needs to point this direction. So this direction needs to point to the degree of the warp, warp clock. So this is a copy of the, of the structural repair manual. So from, the, uh, from uh, Boeing, 
And what you see here is uh, I got a panel and this panel is built up out ply one. So P stands for ply, P1, P2, P3, P4, and go on. And then you see zero degree, 45 degree, 90 degree. You see the material what's made from. So now I know my panel is built up out of six layers, six plies, and ply two is zero degree, ply three is 45 degree. So I know that ply one and ply two is this direction, ply one is this direction. It's very important information to identify the material. I go a little bit faster about this one. Um, if we want to do a, a manufacturing part, we need to build a part um, uh, like this, like this carbon plate. And it's built by a fiber because we just mentioned that a composite is two or more materials. In this case, we have carbon fiber and we have a resin. So I need to combine those two together. We're gonna do that with impregnation. So what you see is a plastic uh, bottom layer on top this is glass fiber. So we put some glass fiber on the, on the plastic and we're gonna close it with another plastic. I'm gonna, dry, uh, I'm gonna draft my lines on the, on the plastic. So I can never draw any line uh, with a pencil on my fiber. I always need to do that on the plastic. I'm gonna mix resin. I lift up the, the plastic, cover the the, the fiber with resin and then close it again. And then with the spatula, I will drive out the, plas uh, the, um, the resin within the plastic to, to, to impregnate the fiber. Now, once this is done, I'm gonna cut out on the line the, 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 uh, the fiber, the impregnated fiber. Now, what you see here, I know that this is my warp orientation. So I can draft a line and this is pointing into the warp block because I know that because the side here, this is stitched. And the stitched side is always on the left side and the right side of the roll. So that's why along with this one, this is my warp orientation. And this is the salvage. So what you see here is the sides. So I know this is my warp orientation, the strongest orientation of the fiber. A warp. So if I want to make a, a zero degree, I need to point this one into this direction. Now always make sure that once you kind of cut uh, several plies that you take one piece and keep it close together because all those now is waste and it's very expensive material. So make sure that you uh, combine it as close as possible. Now you leave the plastic because you impregnate it, you cut it and the plastic is still on. So you leave the plastic on till the latest moment. If you don't do that, you make from your square, you make a round because the plastic holds together. Now, then we talk about pre-impregnated. So in the, in, the, uh, in the aerospace industry, we call it pre-prec. Uh, and pre-prec is already impregnated by the manufacturer. That means I'm gonna buy a roll of carbon fiber, of glass fiber, of Kevlar, but it's already impregnated in the factory with resin. So I need to store this pre-prec at minus 20 degrees Celsius in a freezer. If I don't do that, my material will get sticky and I cannot use it anymore. So what you saw here is that it, uh, we impregnated ourselves. So this is what we, what we do ourselves. So we have a dry fabric and a resin and ourselves, we, uh, we make a wet layup. And over here, this is already impregnated in the factory. So I purchased a roll and everything is ready to use. But I need to store it at minus 20 degrees. Now the same I have for adhesive film and adhesive film is only the resin on the roll. I need to store it at minus 20 degrees Celsius as well. So I just can cut it. 
I can use it with and, 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 and heat it to 120 degrees and it will cure. Now, once we do the impregnation ourselves or we need any resin, we need to make sure that we do a good mixture of, uh, of our resin because it's very important to have a good uh, mixture. So if we mix it, we need to make sure that uh, we have a result like this, a good proper mix. And I have an example, uh, I will show you later, of an uh, um, unproper mix. And an uh, unproper mix uh, will result in, in a quality, a very poor quality that will not harden out, or it will result in a fire. So if you add too much uh, hardener to your resin, you will uh, create a heat within the, within the cup. And the, you have a big chance that you will create a fire. Uh, so you need to be very aware of the good mix ratio. Now important to know is the pot life and the viscosity of your, uh, of your resin. We're gonna go, what you see here is a mix ratio of 160, 116, sorry. Uh, and that's by weight. So 100 of those is 16 of those. And it's important that you have exactly 16. If you do too much by one or two grams, you can already uh, have an uh, exothermic reaction. That means you, it will burn up. Now what you see here is a cure temperature by, uh, by room temperature is seven days, but I can heat it up. So I can change seven days into one hour. I can uh, cure this resin on, two, on 80 degrees Celsius and uh, let it cure in one hour. Now, then you see here a shelf month, 12 months. In the aerospace industry, we cannot use resin overdue. So once, uh, once it mentioned 12 months and it's over the 12 months, you need to throw it away. I'll go a little bit fast on this one. Uh, what you see here is repair patches. Uh, so on the repair patches, it's important to know once I want to do a repair on this one and I make a damage, I need to repair it. And uh, those are the repair patches. And I need to know every orientation of the fiber because I need to place the repair patches in the same direction as original. Now, what you see here is the, the, the 787 structure. Uh, you see a 90, 45, zero degree. And here you got a Fokker. Um, so you have a part. In this case, it's the, uh, the engine cowling. And I think you can, I think if we can even, I cannot show you now. But uh, the engine cowling is on, on the aircraft here. And I have a damage on the aircraft. I need to know do an identification of the part. And what I can see now is that we have um, different materials. The war clock is given. So I see 0, 45, 90. So this is the orientation, how it's orientated. And I see direction of flight, the DOF. So now I know the, the, the aircraft direction. I have my war clock. So I can identify all the materials. Now. I go a little bit further. Now there you see the zero degrees, 90 degrees, you see the pattern, the stripes, you see all the different angles. And if I make a line here, you see minus, minus, plus, plus, 90, 90. They call this a balanced laminate. And what you see, it's, it's nicely balanced. And once you balance a laminate, it'd be always straight. So if I only put zeros, so zero, 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 it comes out curved. So once I open my vacuum bag, I will have a curved uh, laminate. So making a, a balanced laminate, you see you have a nice flat plate. That's why they always balance the materials. Um, how, how long do I have for the, is it 15 minutes somewhere? I think so, 15 minutes. I'll go a little bit faster. So um, looking into the materials uh, used on the aircraft, uh, for example, when you enter the aircraft, 
you walk on the floor panels of the aircraft and the floor panels are made from a composite, so a glass fiber or a carbon fiber in combination with honeycomb. Now, what you see here is the honeycomb. And honeycomb, uh, the sandwich material may, uh, mostly used foam and honeycomb. And if I zoom a little bit further in honeycomb, it can be made out of metal, glass fiber, carbon fiber, aramid, paper, and polyethylene plastic. And what you see, uh, the, the mostly used one is the, this type of honeycomb, hexagonal. So that you see here, this is the hexagonal one. And uh, they have a different shape. That's the flexible one. So this one I can position and I can turn it into any, every angle. If I do the same with this one, it, I cannot bend it. So this is very thin, but if I have a thicker honeycomb, I cannot bend this one. So this is only for flat surfaces. Then you have the overexpanded one. This is for slightly curved. And this one, the flexible, what I just uh, show you in the, in the pattern is for uh, 3D dimensions. So if you remember it, I just mentioned about weave styles. You have plain weave, twill weave and satin weave. Now this is plain weave, twill weave, satin weave. So you can combine that materials together. So the weave style in, including the honeycomb. Now that you have different directions as well. So in fiber, you have the warp clock. That's the most important. And here we have the W direction. And the W here stands for web direction. How can I remember that? If you look into the material, you can just tear one side off. So one side, I can easily tear off. I cannot do that with this side, then it will damage. So if I do this side, I have one nice straight line. So where the backs are glued together, if you look here in the honeycomb, that is my web direction. So the backs are glued together here. So this is how you can uh, remind it. So the web direction is very important once you do a repair that you install the honeycomb at the same direction if you don't do a proper job, you have a lot of stress in your material and uh, when it's critical, it can just pop off. Now coming to damages, there are different types of damages um, on, on a composite that can occur in, uh, in a composite. You have delamination and the delamination is a damage between the layers and that you normally can see with an inspection and that this bond is between the honeycomb and the first layer of uh, your composite. Uh, so that's a di the difference between a delamination and a this bond is this is with the honeycomb, first layer between honeycomb and uh, the fiber, and this is between the fibers. Now we have a dent, a gouge, scratches to the surface. So um, uh, piece missing, delamination, you see here it goes up. Huh? So the delamination you can, you can see with a flashlight and when you clean the part. And here we have a hole, but this piece missing is very good visible. And we have a dent again. We have bolt hole damage, uh, laminate splitting. So this is in, in the material itself. And we have heat damage from a lightning strike. The biggest problem we have with, uh, with composites is that the impact is barely visible. Um, so that's, that's a major problem. If uh, the 787 and someone hits the aircraft, uh, and you, for example, a, um, a truck, a catering truck is, is damaging the aircraft and is not seeing the damage reverse and drives off. You have a big problem there because the damage is there, but you, you will not see it. Now, other examples. Now, lightning strike is a big problem. On a September evening in 1999, fisherman Dave Grillmeyer had just cast his line into the lake. You Without see warning, a, a damage a on, on, a, on a carbon. down from the cloud above him. 
with shocking consequences. The rod, as you see here, yeah, you see what's left of it. it was lightning about a strike, rod. all damaged. It was obviously so hot that it burnt. I'll go a little bit further, but what you saw is the he was fishing with the rod. A lightning strike hits the uh, the carbon, and it was gone. That's why we protect our aircraft uh, with a special mesh. So this is a an, an, a bonding mesh. It goes on top of the of the fabric, and uh, it's connecting to a jumping lightning strip. When the lightning strike, it strikes into the mesh. It will be nicely grounded out the aircraft into the ground, so that you uh, at least you. You cannot protect it from lightning, but you can control it. Now, another case is, uh, is bird strikes. Uh, it's also happened a lot. Now, once you have a damage, you need to inspect it. One of the inspection methods is still um, visual and tapping. Now, tapping we do with a, a, a tap hammer. And you can grab a tap hammer. I will show you some. Uh, I will show you some in uh, some demonstration about uh, the inspection method with a tap hammer and, uh, and an automated tap hammer. Uh, first, I want to show you what happens once you do a damage on metal and once you do one on composites. So a bucking bar is dropped on the metal. And what you see here is a damage. It's, it's good visible. Now, once you put a ruler on, you see a very sharp gouge and a, a bigger dent. So you have two damage in one spot. We do the same on a composite panel, only three layers of carbon fiber and honeycomb. And what you see is nothing. So if you compare that already with, uh, with the metal part, but the problem is that the damage is there. So this is the tapping. What you hear is the damage. So even though the damage is not visible, the damage is there. So that's a big difference nowadays and a problem with uh, composite versus metal and metallic materials. Now, another inspection method is uh, infrared. So you can use an infrared camera. And once the aircraft is landed, the, it's coming from minus, uh, how much, uh, what is the temperature above there? Minus 30 something. And it's, uh, it's very cold. So you have a huge uh, temperature difference once you are landed. So once you have a uh, cold air or a cold air in a delamination or you have moisture, you can see that with an infrared camera. I want to show you some. Uh... I'm, gonna, I'm gonna show you an example. I'm gonna change my... Uh... I need to go back to Zoom. So, I know. is this visible? So, what I have here is the woodpecker, and this is an automated tap hammer. So what I need to do, I need to calibrate it on the part. And you will see it's empty battery. I'm gonna, I'm gonna to not waste time. I'm going to show you something different too. In this panel, 
in this panel. I drilled a small hole with the tape. So a small hole here. And I have here a serene with water. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put some water here into the structure, tape it. And I have a moisture meter here. Now with this moisture meter, I can check on moisture in a, in a, in a panel. So I got the, so I, let me see if it's visible. What I go, I go with the tester, I go over the material and I can find the moisture into the panel. And what happens when you do this, moisture is spread through the honeycomb because you have the damage here. So this is also one way to find This is the woodpecker, as you see, it shows a light. Once you find the damage, you hear a beep and the light goes off. I will put that light in zoom. Those are two inspection methods you can use uh, other than uh, visual to inspect on moisture, but also on delamination and on disbond. So all the rest, this is a technique that um, uh, a technician is able to use. Now, if we go back to the presentation, we come to the part of repair. So we. Uh, I already show you how you can manufacture a part. So you know about the warp direction, you know about impregnation, you can use a pre-preg. Um, the, other, the other methods, once we have a damage now, is how to repair it. Now, the repair needs to be done according to the manuals. Uh, you have different repair methods. One of them is the step repair. So what I need to do is I need to send out the layers of the, of the panel that means um, I'm gonna uh, draw the lines on my, on my panel and I'm gonna do the repair. And this is an overlap of uh, half an inch, but a thickness of uh, a fourth of a millimeter. So 0 0.25 millimeter, I need to send out with hand. It's a very difficult job to do, but you need to be very focused, but it's possible as you can see. Now, so we call this the step repair. And you, because this, what you see is all the steps. Now you see a step repair and you see a result after, uh, after bonding. Now you have them in circle, but also square and also in oval. So it goes like a race, uh, race track. But this is the different shape, but it's given by your manual how to repair. So Airbus and Boeing, they all give you different repair, uh, repair methods. Now, the other one is the scarf repair. And as you see, the repair plans are the same, but you see a difference here. So the other one was in steps and this is scarfed. So we have a step repair and a scarf repair. So this, this, the scarf repair, you take your sender and you're gonna nicely scarf it out. Also take in mind that you have an overlap, uh, in this case, 318 of an inch. Now, another, another way how to repair is with in, in injection. So you drill a hole in the, in the center, all the holes around, you in, inject a resin, and when the resin comes out in this hole, uh, it's fully uh, repaired. Now, how to, uh, how to drill the holes? Because it's important to use uh, special uh, drills for composites. You have the special, you have the reamer, the dogger bills, the bread point, and the difference of using a metallic drill for metallic, a drill for metallic, is that you have all those splinters. So now the result of a composite, and you see the, the holes of a much, much better quality. So it's very important to use not the same uh, drills and tools as you use on metal. 
So for composite, you have a whole range of products and tooling specially made for this, uh, for this composite material. I'm going to show you a vacuum bagging very quick. So once you um, did the repair plies, you need to vacuum bag it. A vacuum bagging means you, uh, with a vacuum pump, you create uh, a vacuum bag with different layers. You have the laminate here, peel ply, bleeder, release film. And this package uh, is part of the vacuum process. Uh, the big advantage of, of vacuum bagging is that you uh, pull all the air between the layers all out. So the quality of your product goes uh, is much and much better and much stronger. Now, one other, I, I just mentioned by the resin that if you use, um, if you cure it on 80 degrees, your, your seven days can go back to one hour by using a hot bonder. Now, this one is the Aeroform uh, hot bonder. You have different brands, like four different brands. And Aeroform is one of them. And with this one, I can uh, control the vacuum and I can control the heat. So I can put on uh, uh, cure cycles. Now, for this one, I will... Uh, it was very, it was very fast, um, very quick. Let me stop the, the sharing. But I think I'm in my, uh, in my 45 minutes because it's now 1045. And this seminar was still 11 for at least for my to 11 for you to four o'clock. So I think uh, uh, looking at uh, at WoWo to see if we need to start with the uh, with the questions. Thank you, Rick, for your presentation. Mm. Uh, I have uh, some. Okay, Rick. do you hear me? Yes. Yes. I have a question from Mr. Hendro from uh, Jakarta. He asked you, uh, Loctite is a catalyst, is that right? Loctite. Now what I show you, Loctite is uh, one of the brands used in the aerospace industry. So it's like a, it's a lot, an Henkel product, uh, at least it was. I don't know if it's uh, because all the companies are uh, purchasing each other, uh, but it was always an Henkel product. And what you saw was a big bottle and a small bottle. Uh, one of them is, the, is the, uh, the base compound and the other one is the hardener. So you need to combine those two to make sure that it cures. So uh, Loctite is the brand and the catalyst is always the small bottle. And in this case, it was uh, uh, two bottles, 116. So I need 100 grams of the A, the, the base compound. And from the B, I need 16 grams. And that combined, 116, makes sure that it, uh, that, it, uh, that it cures. Okay, thank you. And I, I just see another question popping up. What is the resin type? Uh, yeah. And the resin type, uh, this was uh, 93, 96. So you got a whole range of products all listed in the SRM, but uh, uh, Loctite 93.3, uh, 93.96 are the most common used uh, from, uh, from Loctite. Okay. So uh, this is the response from uh, uh, Rick and Rob. And now the question is, uh, from Pak Abian, yeah, from, from Pak Abian, from Mr. Abian. Hello, Rick. Do you have any idea about the research, the research that can be done in uh, in composite repair, especially in aerospace? Yeah, there are uh, there are of course many uh, research areas that can be uh, 
it depends a little bit on which do you uh, want to focus on manufacturing or on the repair side. Uh, the major problem they are facing now is how are we going to repair those new kind of structures because it's much and much more layers than uh, the panels used in the A320 or Boeing 737. So if you compare that with the fuselage of the 787, there are many, many layers. And how are you gonna do, how are you gonna do the repairs on that? How are you gonna do the inspections on that? So can you imagine that I take this, uh, this probe, uh, this, this, this probe, and I need to go all over the uh, 787 structure to do an inspection. So uh, what kind of research is value, very valuable for the industry right now is how to do automated inspections, how to do automated repairs, how to do, do automated uh, scarfing or stepping on, the, on, on site on an aircraft. Um, what are the results on long term on, on uh, the kind of resin, the kind of... Uh, so that's, that, those are very important uh, research areas. How is... Uh, how is uh, moisture uh, moving through the years. I think if you if you look into these areas, they are very valuable for the industry right now. Okay. We have still a lot of questions. Uh, this question is come from Mr. Reda Ramadan. Hi, I would like to ask some question. Uh, question number one. The delamination happens in the interface and causing significant strain reduction. And because the nature of delamination, that is uh, B, P, D, is uh, there any effective method to repair the delamination, especially in unidirectional state C, F, R, P? I will, I will. Uh, okay. So the, the, in the question you mentioned BVD, that stands for barely visible damage. Mm -hmm. This is one of the problems within uh, within composites. The damage is not visible. Um, in the interface, it causes six hundred strength reduction, and because the nature of delamination, it's a BVD. Yeah. So now, uh, a delamination on the on the structures would be uh, sanded out. And until the damage is gone, so we, we, you send it out till the layer that is uh, causing the uh, delamination. Uh, and from there, you're going to build it up again. So there's still not uh, enough research on injection um, to see what's the result of strength. Because adding only uh, resin is not strong enough. So normally, you have a mixed ratio of, of resin and fiber. And the less resin, there may need to be a balance between uh, fiber and resin to get an ultimate strength. So if you see, uh, to, to answer your question, uh, replace the part is not uh, economic. It would be too much, too expensive. Uh, so it will always looking into the repair. Uh, depends on what kind of panels, huh? but I'm, I'm now, uh, your question for me is relating to aircraft primary structures. So then primary structures is, uh, is always better to repair it. Um, and injection, what, what I see, what I, uh, what I notice in the manuals is that injection is going out of the manuals. So adding only resin is not strong enough. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this is uh, the quant the continuation of uh, the question. Yeah, you you have answered, uh, but the question I I want to tell to you. I Can we only in that case? Uh, I only saw, uh, on his question. The image composite. Yeah. Uh, the, the question of Mr. Uh, Abiyad, yeah, Mr. Redaya. Okay, you have answered. The second question, I have heard that there was a research that utilized some kind of mechanical so the operator can monitor a condition of composite part in real time. Is this uh, has been applicable in aerospace world? Yeah, uh, yes, it's applicable. 
Uh, and I know that they are, uh, uh, they're testing it as well. There was there were already tests four years ago with it, with this uh, with this technique. The only thing, uh, the only problem is once they test it, it will take you ten to fifteen years to introduce in the aerospace industry of all the tests that needs to be done. So I know they are testing the. Um, so once you have, for example, all the sensors in your built in your uh, in your parts that the, the computer knows that there was a hill strike or a bird strike at that location. And uh, the techniques are there. It's not applicable, of not used right now. So there are not any aircraft flying in the commercial with this technique, but they're looking into it. OK. So the, uh, yeah, That's, uh, that is uh, the question from audience. OK. Uh, uh, maybe we have uh, arrived to the to the end part of the of the webinar. Uh, Rick, I ask I ask you to to give an impression of this uh, uh, public lecture, Rick. Please. Uh, Can I? Uh, sorry to interrupt, but there was one question coming in, and that was I want to modify my boat, which is made of fiberglass. I wish to make it longer by considering its material, fiberglass. It is it safe to add some length, and how to make the construction safe? Yeah, so that's a, um, that's, that's a good question. Therefore, I need to see uh, the construction, but you definitely can, uh, you can make it longer. Uh, you need, only need to select uh, the good materials and probably you may need to make a mold for it, but it's definitely possible. Uh, but to go deeper into this, we need to uh, do that in a private conversation to share me some more information about this uh, about this uh, this boat. Okay, Rick, thank you very much for your answer. So uh, please <laughs> give uh, some some uh, some uh, word from us about this uh, webinar. I thought, uh, or, or I want to. I want to say to the audience. Uh, no, no. Uh, read you chat. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, wait a moment. Uh, para audience yang saya hormati ya. Uh, Rick itu sementara ini beliau mem memberikan juga uh, service ya untuk. Uh, training untuk di bidang komposit ataupun uh, uh, sheet metal repair. Jadi kalau ada yang berminat atau uh, ingin uh, apa uh, punya masalah dengan repair uh, di aircraft structure untuk bela untuk training bisa menghubungi uh, Mr. Rick Van Opdorp ya. Uh, atau bisa menghubungi kami juga di Politeknik di Batam. Oke okay, Rick, uh, please uh, time for you to give an some uh, word about our okay oh yeah yeah i'm sorry we have uh, the last question maybe is there a special, is there any special consideration to repair composite structure that manufactured using vacuum assisted resin infusion for the operation of seaplane i mean in the seawater hello Rick. Where do you see that question? I cannot see it. See it in chat. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Is there any special consideration to repair composite structure that manufactured using vacuum assisted resin infusion for the operation of sea plane? I mean, uh, in sea water. Uh. You can see, you can see, yeah. uh, and I see it, yeah. Is there any special concern to repair companies during manufacturing using vacuum assist resin? Yes. Now, I think uh, the most important thing are the, again, are the materials. Um, resin infusion is a technique when you need to do large components. If you look at the materials, it depends a little bit what you want to make, uh, what kind of components. Uh, otherwise, you could 
either use uh, pre-prex, uh, so uh, the, the, the pre-impregnated materials, or you can do indeed a resin infusion technique. And um, resin infusion technique is, an, is a technique. I just show you wet layup. So there you do the impregnation yourself. And uh, resin infusion is a, a vacuum bagging technique and then inject the, the, the resin. And uh, vacuum technique, vacuum in, uh, infusion technique is a great uh, way to, to make new components for uh, any type of aircraft, uh, including seaplane, but also um, um, pre-prec. It's also a very good way how to, how to do that. Okay, uh, we have still a question, Eric. Okay, good. Uh, the question is, any other resin can be used like swan core, isotistic, and the resin? Okay, um, yes, you can use all kinds of resin. The only thing is, one, it's related to aerospace, you always need to follow the SRM. The SRM is the structure repair manual given by the OEM. So uh, when Boeing, when you fly a Boeing aircraft, operate a Boeing aircraft, uh, 737, a certain type uh, with a certain uh, serial number, you need to use the SRM given for that type of aircraft. And you need to follow all the part numbers listed in that SRM. So. In our case, we don't have the freedom to use any type of resin, but if you if you go to other industries, you have that freedom. So in this case, you want to modify a boat, um, you have the freedom to use any type of resin. So you can select. In the aerospace, it's selected for you and given in the SRM. Okay. Thank yeah. you a lot. Okay, still a question, Eric. No. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much Rick, uh, for your answer. Uh, it's time to give an, uh, your uh, opinion on impression about uh, this webinar. Yeah, I, I, it was very good, very good arranged. So thank you for that. We had a lot of participants. So I'm very glad to have all those uh, participants. Uh, it was for my, my first time doing this. So it was new for me as well. Um, mm -hmm. I, I like it very much. Um, uh, what I normally used to is a lot of interactions, so direct questions, and uh, uh, so that's what I, I miss a little bit. But uh, um, and that's not about you because we get the questions, but it's more more, uh, more from my side that I used to normal having people in my class. <laughs> I, I like I like the the fact that I can still share my knowledge uh, with mm -hmm. you and with all the participants. I had. I had a preparation of resin infusion, so I have mm -hmm. a, I had the panel here in front of me, so I want to show you the resin infusion technique, but uh, yeah, time flies. Rick. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, the webinar uh, or uh, public lecture will be, will be, uh, we will, we will, we arrive to the to the end of the session. Uh, thank you very much uh, to Eric, yeah. and terima kasih banyak kepada para audience. Dan kami uh, memberitahukan juga bahwa pada Seninnya akan datang. Pada Seninnya akan datang. Hmm, kami akan mengadakan uh, public lecture juga, ya, yeah. public lecture juga dengan tema uh, vertical flight uh, industry. Pembicaranya adalah uh, Mr. Albertus Mulia uh, di Chandra dari Bell Helicopter dari dari Kanada, ya. Tapi karena perbedaan waktu dengan Kanada berbeda 11 jam, jadi uh, webinar nanti itu atau public lecture nanti itu akan kita mulai uh, jam 8.30 pagi untuk menyesuaikan dengan uh, narasumber yang di Kanada jam 9 malam lebih, ya. Nah, eh, jangan lupa Senin depan jam 8.30 pagi kita akan bertemu lagi dengan webinar mengenai
vertical flight uh, industry akan mengupas uh, berbagai helikopter dan uh, berbagai uh, sarana uh, transportasi udara lainnya yang yang lagi tren saat ini. Terima kasih kepada semuanya telah mengikuti webinar ini. Sampai ketemu di di apa di, di webinar selanjutnya di hari Senin yang akan datang. Terima kasih banyak. Oke, okay, Rick, uh, please stay here. We have maybe we have uh, another another discussion, another topic with uh, with our colleague from from Batam Aerotechnic, I think. All right. Thank you very much. I will stay here. Uh, please stay. I want to invite him.